Hello everyone. Today in this lecture we will derive an expression for the calculation of the potential difference between two points due to a charge, due to a point charge. So let us see. Here first I will define what is potential difference between two points. As the name suggests the potential means the ability to do something okay so what is potential difference between two points due to some field of a charge it is nothing but the work done per unit charge when we move the charge from point one to the other point that is if i move a charge between two points either the field will work or i will have to do the work so that the charge can move so the work done per unit charge gives us a value which is numerically equal to the potential difference between the two points due to a field which is created by some other point charge. Okay, now let's formalize this. Here I have written that delta V that is potential difference between two points is equal to the work done work necessary to move this charge between those two points and this field this field might be created by some other charge let us say small q and i am moving a charge capital q okay now we already know that electric field intensity can also be written as force per unit charge that is f by q so i can easily write work done as f dot product of the displacement now if i put the value of the force as f is equal to q e i will get this expression for delta v or dv which will be equal to e dot dl now if i integrate this expression then i will get the value delta v that is v12 that is potential difference between point 1 and 2 so we can see that delta v will be positive if delta w is positive okay and q is positive now we are assuming that q is positive okay it is capital q we are assuming that the delta w is positive and q is also positive now what does it mean it means that if I wanted to move a charge from let us say point 1 to point 2 then some work delta W work must have been done by the field why because I am considering the force due to the field on the charge so the work will be done by the field to move this charge so some energy will be consumed or some energy will be exhausted by the field so the energy content will be higher at point 1 as compared to the point 2 since I have uh, since the field has consumed some energy or exhausted some energy when the charge was moved from point 1 to point 2 so we can say that the point 1 is at higher potential than the poten uh, the point at 2 so we can say that V12 will be positive if the point 1 is at higher potential and point 2 is at lower potential so uh, I think it will be easier to understand now the sign how do we choose the sign of the potential difference if the field does a work on positive charge then it means that the first point is at higher potential and the second point is at lower potential that is the point from where the positive charge has been moved to the next charge when the field was created by some positive charge and I was moving a positive charge in this way I can see that energy is exhausted by the field so that is point 0.2 is at some lower energy now i have shown here a case where i have taken a point charge q and i am going to calculate the potential difference between these two points point 0.1 and point 0.2 now i have shown two paths here first path that i will integrate first along this path then I will move to this path and then I will again integrate this this will give me the potential difference I could have directly integrated like this from 1 to 2 this would have given me 
the right value so you can see that the field created by this charge small q is radial okay this field is radial and this direction this direction is tangential so this angle is 90 degree similarly this angle is 90 degree so f dot dl or e dot dl which is equal to e dl cos 90 degree because angle here is 90 degree it will be equal to 0 so there will not be any work done there will be no work done when i will move along these two paths okay the work will be done only when i move along this path and the resultant we can see will be this that is the direct integration from between point 1 and point 2 since the dot product will finally give me the distance which is equivalent to the direct length so let us see how do we calculate it now in the previous video i have derived the expression of field due to a point charge or due to line charge with uniform line charge density so, so the expression will be same which will be q upon 2 pi epsilon naught x d1 to d2 dx now this will be a logarithmic term that is q upon 2 pi epsilon natural log d2 by d1 as i already shown that this result is independent of the path taken that is i can go from zigzag like this and come like this again the work will be done same work done will be same if i move directly from point 1 to 2 or move from like this come here and go there and come like here then again the work done will be same that is the work done between two points will not depend upon the path of integration now you might be thinking that why we are discussing the potential difference electric field we want to first uh, calculate why these two quantities why since we want to know the capacitance the capacitance formula is given by the ratio of charge over voltage now similar to resistance which is given by r is equal to v by i or capital v by i similarly c is given by q over v now we already know that r is independent of v and i if we think uh, in linear terms and it only depends upon the geometrical parameters that is rho l by a which is depending upon the material the length of the material and the area of the material so the resistance depends upon the material and the dimension similarly the capacitance depends upon the dimension and the permeability sorry the permittivity of the medium it does not depend upon q or v it is a ratio of these two quantities it is independent of these two if i think in linear terms it depends upon the permittivity of the medium and the dimension involved of the two metal metals or metallic plates so now we can have a we can have a brief idea how to calculate the capacitance of two wire line how we will do it first i will assume a charge between two conductors let us say it is having charge q and it is having sub q a q b or if it is q plus a it will be minus q a since uh, uh, we want to calculate the capacitance the charge will be same on two plates okay now if i find the potential difference between these two points using some formula like from electric field or some other medium or some other manner then it will be very easy for me to calculate the capacitance of these two wires i will have to just find this ratio q a by v and it will give me the value of the capacitance so in the next slide we will calculate the capacitance of two wire line now let's see the derivation of capacitance of a two wire line here i have shown two wires 
of a transmission line let us see it is the go circuit and it is the return wire it is the go wire and it is the return wire it is carrying charge qa and it is carrying charge qb of course qb will be equal to minus qa if i take qa as positive then using the equation which i derived in the previous slide i can write vab by writing two equations first i will write potential due to charge qa then i will write the expression for the potential due to charge qb now you see for qa this charge this charge qa d2 will be d and d1 will be its radius the formula was vab was q upon 2 pi epsilon natural log d2 by d1 now for this charge d2 will be this d and d1 will be ra so i have written d by ra now let us see the case of rb now for charge qb d2 will be rb and d1 will be d why since i already taken this as the first charge so i can use the previous equation by for calculating the potential due to both charges and using the superposition principle i can easily find the total potential difference so vab will come out to be qa by 2 pi epsilon log natural log d2 by d1 giving me d by ra and qb by 2 pi epsilon log natural log rb by d now you can see that the that a conductor is equipotential, equipotential so its surface is an equipotential and i have taken this distance as d1 similarly i have taken this distance as d2 here so now if i use qb is equal to minus qa then i will get this expression for vab that is vab will be equal to qa by 2 pi epsilon natural log d square by ra rb volt now some might will say some persons will say that uh, the equipotential surfaces change their shape whenever a conductor is present why because the conductor is also a also an equipotential surface so let us see i have shown here two equipotential surfaces surface one and surface two so this surface one will follow this path up to the conductor now conductor being an equipotential surface this whole path will be like this through the conductor over the conductor surface now the second path will be like this and it will bend near the conductor so how do i calculate the center to center distance the problem for calculating the voltage difference the potential difference it is easy you can see if i let us say somewhere here it is the second conductor if i go from this path to this path from this pa this part to here directly using this path then i will get some value now you can see this will cater for center to center distance why since this equipotential surface is at a distance of the center to center distance only although this surface is curved near the conductor but as we can see the conductor is still at the same potential of this surface so there will be no problem in calculating the center to center distance d in this way the presence of the conductor will not create much error in our expression for the potential difference however there will be a change in the expression if we try to find the exact expression for the capacitance or the voltage difference uh, then there will be a change due to the presence of another charge let us say this is some charge q and this is some charge minus q now the charge placement will get disturbed it will not be uniform because of the presence of this charge that is why the expression will change but the change or the error is not that much and 
while we will study the image method in our EMFT, uh, EMFT, EMFT uh, subject, then we will easily derive using the image method the exact expression for the voltage difference or the potential difference and in that way we will be easily calculating the value of the exact capacitance which will come out to be this cn is equal to that is capacitance to neutral 2 pi epsilon naught upon natural log d by 2r plus under root of d by 2r square minus 1 farad per meter now before coming up coming to this capacitance to neutral we will see how it is related to the capacitance between two conductors now here I have shown two conductors okay I already calculated VAB charge is already known QA so I can easily find CAB as QA over VAB that is 2 pi epsilon natural load d square by RA RB farad per meter okay why farad per meter because Q is a linear charge density that is coulomb per meter that but voltage VAB was in volts only but this charge is in coulomb per meter that is why I am getting the unit farad per meter instead of farad. Now CAB can be shown like this that is it is the capacitance between these two conductors. Now if I want to try to show CN, CN will be like this this neutral is, is somewhere at the midpoint at the mid, middle potential and there will again will be some cn since the potential difference between these two points and these two points will be ma uh, same in magnitude so cn will be same here for these two capacitances now you can see these two cns in series are making an equivalent capacitance which is CAB. Now when we add two capacitances in series they actually add like the resistance which resistances which are in parallel that is CN into CN by 2CN will give me CAB or I can use formula 1 by CAB is equal to 1 by CN plus 1 by CN which is similar to adding the two resistances in parallel. So there is a little difference in calculation of equivalent capacitances as compared to that of resistances. So CN will come out to be twice of CAB that is capacitance to neutral will be double in value to that of capacitance between the phases and its value come out to be 2 pi epsilon natural load d square over ra rb now if i take ra is equal to rb then this will come out to be r square okay and the expression will come out to be pi epsilon naught pi epsilon natural log d by r farad per meter not the units it is farad per meter now there will be a question in minds of some people that what radius we will use if the conductor is stranded why you see this conductor if it is stranded there will be many strands okay many strands one about the other now if it had been a hollow or hollow or a solid conductor then the equipotential surfaces will be perpendicular to the surface of the conductor which I have tried to show here also that the equipotential surface is perpendicular to the surface of conductor but for standard conductor there will not be any metallic part here at some place that is there will be some there might be some gap so the equipotential lines may not be perpendicular to the conductor they may go like little bit like this little bit like this so what kind of radius we should take for calculation of capacitance for a standard conductor the experiences have shown that if we use the external radius that is this radius the external radius for a standard conductor then the error between the exact value and the the measured value and the calculated value is not that much and it is very negligible and in this way we can cater for the uh, calculation for standard conductors also now similar to the expression for the uh, inductive uh, reactance of a transmission line 
we can use tables which are provided by manufacturers in calculating the uh, capacitive reactance of the transmission line which we will see in the next slide. Now let's see how to use the tables provided by manufacturers in calculating the capacitance values for a transmission line. Usually manufacturer provide two values what one is capacitive reactance at one meter and second one is capacitance capacitive reactance spacing factor. Let us see what are these. Now I have shown that Xc that is capacitive reactance can be written as 1 by j omega c or 1 by 2 pi fc writing omega as 2 pi f. Now ignoring the j part let us say uh, we are only interested, interested in the magnitude then I can write by putting the value of epsilon no, epsilon and 2 pi it can come out to be 2.862 by f natural log d by r and c since it was in c was in farad per meter so this xc will come out to be in op meter that is it will for calculating the total capacitive reactance of transmission line we will have to divide by the length of the transmission line instead of multiplying it that is now there is a little bit difference now we had already seen that for calculating the uh, inductive reactance the unit was henry per meter or ohm per meter and we had to multiply by the length of the conductor but here it will be opposite it is in ohm meter so we will have to divide by the length of the conductor so please note this difference while using the uh, tables or calculating the values for from this formula now i can break this natural log part in two terms one as 1 by r and other as d now this this expression can easily be seen as the capacitance when d is equal to 1 meter that is it is capacitive reactance at 1 meter now this factor just depends upon the distance between the two conductors of a line so that is why it is known as capacitive reactance spacing factor and these two values are given for standard spacing and standard conductor radius and in this way just by adding these two values I can get the uh, capacitive reactance of the line in terms of ohm meter and if I divide by divide this total expression by the length of the line I will get the total capacitive reactance of the line in ohm. In this way I can use the tables provided by the manufacturer. Now this ends our uh, lecture. In the next lecture we will see how to calculate the capacitive reactance of a three phase transmission line with equilateral spacing. <clears throat> if you find my lecture helpful then it is requested that please share and subscribe my channel and also uh, there is a link provided in the descrip description of a telegram group, group which we have created for uh, uh, doubt discussion or discussion about the lectures and it is uh, highly recommended that you uh, also join that uh, telegram channel and keep yourself updated regarding the various doubts as well as the upcoming lectures. Thank you.